So last year, there was a public announcement that CERN would be shutting down the LHC for the next two years. But CERN isn't shutting down. The LHC is. So, just so we're clear, CERN is still doing what it does, even more now than ever. They just shut down the LHC so that they could upgrade and add to it, which is the HL LHC or High Luminosity Large Hadron Collider. I know that hearing about the shutdown one might assume that the whole thing is shut down when CERN is much much more than just the LHC. So what happens is the public turns its head and forgets about them and then they get to work I mean they get busy. They just completed the construction of the tunnel to the new addition. So there are two things I want to discuss here. One is cosmic rays and the other is CERN because it is becoming quite clear as to why they are doing certain things. I have said time and time again that a lot of the earth changes occurring right now are due to forces outside of our planet. And almost everything that CERN does points to that. CERN isn't invested in figuring out how to clean up the air. That's not the problem. The problem is what they're actually studying there and that's particles. You know every time I turn around they're doing something new. I can't leave them alone for a second. There's always some new experiment that takes the stage while they try to sneak in some other experiments through the back door. And you have to be careful with them because they're a clever gal. They use their own lingo, don't even know what they're talking about half the time. And they work with other labs around the world and only God knows what goes on in those places. We will be taking a closer look at those facilities but for right now, just for starters, you're probably more curious about what is going on with CERN today. Well, I'll show you. So let me just make something very clear to everyone. There has been speculation for a long time that CERN has this agenda of opening some type of portal or gate to hell. Some say it's the door to the abyss mentioned in the Bible. But let me remind everyone that demons can be summoned. The fallen angels descended to earth freely. Demon possession. None of these things required or require the assistance of CERN or anything like it. Although, I still have my reserves about that, there is something that CERN has been doing that is becoming more clearly understood as time goes on. Somehow, some way, something significant happened after World War II that caused the US and several other nations to turn their attention to the stars. Yes, CERN was founded in 1954, but it was in 1947 at Brookhaven Labs where they would start to get into this research with goals of building large machines, particle accelerators that couldn't be replicated by other nations. NASA was founded just four years after CERN. So with all this set up, they can better study and understand the possible and likely threat that exists in the cosmos. See, everyone knows that if a planet like Planet X or Nibiru exists, then the problem is not it crashing into us. The problem is the forces that would accompany such a planet. That's the problem and that is what CERN has been studying. They need to know how these particles or waves enter the solar system. At what intervals, how these particles affect other forces in our solar system, and how they affect our sun and planet Earth. This is the major issue we are dealing with right now. And so it is the issue and focus of CERN and the space program. Most of what CERN does you have to find out for yourself. 
and you have to actually understand what they're talking about. It's going right over most people's heads, I can tell you that. Most people I know aren't sitting there studying particle physics, and they know this too. They know it only interests the nerds of science. It only interests everybody else because everybody else thinks they're opening up portals, and for good reason. If you openly say you're trying to open up tiny black holes and capture antimatter, I can see why people would raise an eyebrow to that. I mean, right now, you are all probably wondering, what in the world is this thing? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. Does it really take a CERN scientist to see that it is some type of mechanism designed to hold something together? How many of you remember the movie Ghostbusters? Think about the traps they use to catch ghosts. Well, there you have it. It's basically a giant magnet that holds antimatter in place inside a vacuum to keep the antimatter from making contact with the inside of the trap. It can hold a billion antiprotons, a lot more than what they used to move around. See, these places, they want you all to think that this is the first time they've done this. No, this is the first time they're telling you about it. Because now they want to move a lot more of it. The problem is what happens when you move antimatter around in a container from one position to another. Man, CERN has all types of gadgets and gadgets, but anyway, oh, by the way, be cautious of the word first. Whenever they say it's the first time, I usually don't believe them. This thing is part of Project Puma, the purpose of which is to produce antimatter, trap and contain it for an extended period of time, and transport it to ISOL, the isotope mass separator online facility. How they get Isold out of that, I don't know. But Isold is the name of a Celtic princess who accidentally drank a love potion, causing her to fall in love with the wrong man, ultimately leading to the death of her and her lover. Now at first that doesn't sound like it has anything to do with CERN's Isold, but love potions and alchemy does, as the Isold facility is set up for the purposes of alchemy. They want to eventually control antimatter, and that is what they are willing to admit to us. And even that alone is crazy and way too much power for men to be tinkering around with. Now I could sit here and speculate and say, well, there may be a much darker agenda, and all that is for public consumption. What they are really doing is summoning up demons, trapping demons like in Ghostbusters, and then transporting them to their containment unit called Isold. I mean, look, Solomon was said to have technology to control demons. It was one of the fallen angels that taught these secrets to men. We'll get into that another time, but all the pieces fit. Let me ask you this, is that idea too far-fetched? I would say it's about as far-fetched of an idea as trapping antimatter so we can control space-time. Something we don't even really know what it is. One thing I know is that when you start conjuring up these type of energies with machines and the like, you are probably attracting these entities into your space. Who knows what Tesla was dealing with when he was running his experiments. We know he had communications with something. And how much of CERN's technology is Tesla technology? How much of that technology is ancient? Now aside from all that, CERN has been focusing on their neutrino detection. Why? Well, neutrinos are apparently the first type of particle detected when something like a star goes supernova. And by understanding the neutrino, they can get a good idea of the source, the scale of the explosion, and the possible particles that will follow behind the neutrinos, and when they can expect them to hit us. The LHCF is set up to probe first interaction that triggers cosmic ray showers, which is when cosmic rays hit the atmosphere and create secondary particles that shower down to Earth. The cloud experiment is set up to find out the effects of these particles on clouds, so that they can explain the strange cloud formations that have been sighted over the past several years now. Clouds can act as a warning sign for an influx of certain particles. 
Speaking of clouds, I am sure that CERN is well aware of the possibility of some atmospheric side effects in the area due to running their experiments. Some say it's weather manipulation, just as they said happened when Tesla was powering up his experiments. Attracting spirits is probably another side effect, a consequence to engaging in such science. They just finished the connection tunnels for the high luminosity LHC to the LHC, 100 meters underground, and the CERN Director General, Fabiola Giannotti, marked the tunnel connection on Friday the 13th of all days. Now that may not be such a big deal, but you look at this and say, oh, but of course, why not Friday the 13th? I mean, most normal people would avoid celebrating on that day, but maybe that's just me. You know, folks, I don't know what goes on in the minds of some of these individuals involved. Who knows what some of these project leaders get into in the privacy of their own homes. But it does seem at times that, by the way they name things, the timing of experiments and events, sometimes what they do does seem a bit witchcrafty. New neutrino detectors are coming out. They want to upgrade the Dune project or deep underground neutrino experiment over at Fermilab, along with new antimatter gravity experiments to see what the effects of gravity forces have on antimatter, the Alpha G and G bar experiments. You have to ask yourself, why is the neutrino so important to them? You know, years ago, there was this movie with Tom Hanks called Angels and Demons. A sequel, I guess, to the Da Vinci Code. Well, anyway, parts of that movie were filmed at CERN. For those of you who have never seen it, the idea is that the Illuminati, the evil Illuminati, want to steal antimatter from CERN and use it to destroy the Vatican in a way similar to the Big Bang. It's just a movie, but that was 10 years ago that they were saying, well, some of the science in the movie is wrong and we don't have a way to make antimatter hold still long enough for us to hold on to it, let alone stick it in a glass jar. But today, here we are. They figure that out in just 10 years. That's pretty impressive and extremely scary. Now, I doubt anyone would have the capability to steal antimatter, at least not now anyways, but transporting it, you know, accidents happen. So what is the worst that can happen while doing this? Speaking of angels and demons, I want to get into something that I thought might be an interesting subject to explore while we are on the subject of what CERN does. We are going to take a look at some ancient technologies that some may have considered back then to be magical. Until then, there's always more fun and excitement to discover and learn at CERN. God bless you all, and I'll talk to you soon.